Hi, welcome to Rock and Metal Invasion. My name is Steve. Coming up on the show today, I'm doing a profile of songwriter Marty Fredrickson. So Marty Fredrickson is a very prolific songwriter. He's worked with some of the biggest names in rock and metal. And today I thought I'd just go through and look at some of the artists he has worked, in, uh, worked with and also you know, match that up with uh, some of the records in my collection that he has a songwriting credit on. Um, I've done a profile of a songwriter before. I did Desmond Child. Um, and I thought, let's look at another songwriter who works with a lot of rock and metal artists. And uh, he is definitely one who has done that. And he's been doing it for quite some time now. Um, but he's been in bands as well. Um, and we'll have a look at um, one particular band that uh, he started off with that is in my collection. Uh, actually, there's a couple of bands uh, that uh, he started off with that I that I like and I have in my collection. But then from then on, it'll be mainly looking at um, the bands or artists that he has uh, helped with songwriting um, and contributed to songwriting for. Uh, but what I thought we'd do is let's go through Discogs and have a look at the credits that he has for songwriting. All right, so here we are looking at his writing and arrangement credits on Discogs. Uh, interesting, his first um, credit is actually from the Crimson Glory album, Strange and Beautiful, for the song The Chant. But what I uh, want to look at first of all is Outlaw Blood, and this is actually his band that he's actually in. So he actually is in this band. And yes, obviously he does the songwriting, but this is actually his band. Now, there's another band after that. Now, he's, there's some songwriting credits here for the band Brother Kane, and that's going to come up in 1995. You can see that there. But also then, after he leaves Outlaw Blood, he uh, joins up Motherland, which I've talked about previously. Uh, I did a Lost Classic from the 90s where I talked about Motherland and their album Peace For Me. Um, so that's the band that he joins after Outlaw Blood. Now, interesting too with Motherland, as I said, in the Lost Classic of the 90s episode that I did. Motherland is basically the Bonham band, but uh, Daniel McMaster is not the vocalist. It is Marty Fragrantson who comes in as the singer. And interestingly too, you know, in Outlaw Blood, he was not the singer. He was not the vocalist. He was the guitar player. So, but he comes in on Mother, for the Motherland album um, as a vocalist. But um, yeah, so let's have a look though at... Uh, Outlaw Blood, and then let's have a look at Motherland, and then we'll continue going through Discogs, because after that, um, for things in my collection anyway, it's it's just artists that he has provided songwriting for. All right, so let's have a look at the Outlaw Blood album. So this is the album here. I've got it on vinyl. Outlaw Blood, released in 1991 on the Atco label. Here's the band at the back there. Um, I'm not actually sure which one is Marty. Um, I have a feeling that's probably him there. Um, I've seen recent photos of him, and but um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's him. Um, and yeah, he is the guitar player on this album. Here's the vocalist uh, there. Mark McCoy is his name. Um, now, this album's actually produced by Jeff Paris who put out a couple of, um, well, he's put out more than a couple, he's put out a few solo albums, but he's also, interestingly enough, probably more known as a as a songwriter, uh, providing, you know, he's written for other artists, Mr. Big is one that comes to mind, um, but yeah, he's a, also a solo artist himself, but yeah, and he's, he's producing this album, so that's kind of interesting, um, but yeah, not an album that was particularly successful, um, yeah, like I said, released in uh, 1991. Now, it does actually say here, produced by Jeff Paris and the Blood Brothers, and it says down the bottom, the Blood Brothers are Marty Fredrickson and Mark McCoy, who's the vocalist. So um, he's getting a little bit of um, he's getting a little bit of uh, production experience here as well, because that also is um, 
uh, something that he has done for artists as well. So not just as a, uh, as a songwriter, but also a producer as well. Um, but let's have a listen to, um, this is the first song off the album, and it's probably my favourite song off the album. It's called Tower of Love. Let's have a listen to this. Now, this was not the first single. The first single was actually Body and Soul, and there's a music video that you can check out. But uh, this is probably my, my favourite song off the album. Interesting vocals. It does remind me a little bit of Billy Idol, and actually, um, I've got Martin Popoff's book here where, um, in the review, which um, he gives this album 6 out of 10. Um, and he says, Opening Cut Tower of Love melds Billy Idol and Kick Tracy with sly criminal intent, setting the stage for what hopefully becomes an artful and icy slice of corporate metal. Alas, results are mixed. And I think that's probably my feelings as well, that it um, does start off promising Tower of Love, good song, yes it does remind you of other artists, but yeah, you can imagine this potentially having, you know, it's got some hit potential. Um, good song. Um, the next song as well um, is, is a good one. Also, uh, Your Body and Soul, and like I said, there was a music video for that. But fades away a little bit um, towards the end. But it's 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 a pretty good album. Um, I think 6 out of 10 is probably something like what I would give it as well. So interesting though too, he's 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 the guitar player on this album, so he is not uh, not singing. But that is about to change because after this band, he joins another band, or basically gets together with some other musicians and forms a new band. So um, I'll just fade this one down, and uh, we'll move on now to what happens next. So. Like I said, that was released in 1991. One and done, sort of band and album. Um, you know, again, we're talking about that time, 1991, where it's not easy for bands uh, that are in that sort of, you know, whether you like to use the term or not, hair metal uh, category. But that's certainly the image that they had. They were probably going to get put into that category. In 1991, it was getting tough. Obviously, that was the year Nirvana broke. We've gone through that story a million times. So, yeah, so not successful. Um, he regroups, um, as we saw in Discogs, he's starting to write with uh, Brother Kane, but uh, he also uh, joins a band called Motherland, uh, and I have, of course, profiled them on my Lost Classics of the 90s. So I won't go into too much detail, but of course, uh, as I did say uh, when I did that episode, that this is actually bot the Bonham Band. So this is the Bonham Band, but with Marty Fredericks Fredrickson on vocals, um, Jason McMaster not on vocals. And it's a really good album. Um, some good songs on it. Uh, now I'm going to play. Um, I'm going to play my favourite song off the album. So this is a song called Brother, and um, it kicks off with. Um, it's almost like they they've recorded a part where um, Marty's talking to the producer. And it starts off very softly. But then it kicks in. Not a heavy song. Sounds a little bit a little bit pearl jammy. That's not a bad thing, necessarily. Not for me anyway. It's definitely got the grunge elements and there's some some songs on here that they're definitely moving away from that sort of 80s hard rock sound um, or classic rock sound that Bonham had more more that sort of 90s alternative grunge mid 90s kind of sound early 90s kind of sound that was becoming popular but I've always liked this song Yeah, like I said, rem reminds me, uh, you know, bands like Pearl Jam. Also, another band that I profiled uh, from uh, 
as a lost classic of the 90s than the Nixons. Reminds me a little bit of their song Sister. Which is interesting because the song sounds good, brother. Total coincidence, but it kind of reminds me of that song. Anyway, um, I'll fade that one down. And well, what I'd like to do now is I'll go back onto Discogs and let's have a look at what uh, Marty gets up to next because this band doesn't stick around for very long. Uh, I guess. Again, just one of those things that it doesn't work out, it doesn't become a they don't they don't um they don't have a hit. Um and interestingly enough, Marty starts doing uh songwriting for other artists and some of them are quite uh well known artists, quite big big names in hard rock or metal. So let's have a look and um I'll then start showing some of the um the records and CDs I've got in my collection that he has a credit for. Alright, so um, let's carry on looking at Discogs here. So I'm um, on Discogs and um, you can see that uh, we were at Motherland, Peace For Me. And then he's got a credit here working on the Brother Kane album. And he has lots of songwriting credits on that. But we're going to look at Brother Kane very soon. But let's move on and let's have a look at uh, Vince Neil. And this is his second solo album. And let's actually play a track from it. This uh, this song is called One Way, one of my favorite songs from the album, and he has done a lot of the songwriting on this album. Uh, also, um, the Dust Brothers are helping with songwriting and production, so it sounds quite industrial. It's not a, it's not a fan favorite, definitely, but I actually really like it. Um, be one of my, um, actually one of my favorite. Um, Motley Crue related albums. Um, I don't mind the sound at all. In fact, I think it's really good. Uh, I'd even go, go, so, go so far to say I prefer this album to his debut album. Um, but they're kind of hard to compare because it's quite a different sound. You know, in some ways, yeah, that first Vince Neil album is almost like this lost Motley Crue album. Um, it sounds like a classic sort of Motley Crue from the 80s kind of album. Uh, on this one though, it sounds very much, uh, you know, like the sort of the kind of sound that was popular at the time. So, um, if you were expecting a classic Motley Crue kind of sound, you would have ended up being a bit disappointed. But um, and yeah, it is really well, you know, maybe over overproduced. Um, I could say well produced, but maybe overproduced. Um, but um, yeah, I like the song, and I like many of the songs on this album, but it wasn't successful, and I think part of the reason it wasn't successful was, you know, he, he wasn't catering to his fan base, Vince Neil, Motley Crue fans, they, they wanted a Motley Crue kind of sound, they didn't want this industrial rock, uh, alternative rock type of sound, and you know, this sound kind of, um, they kind of carried on with this a little bit, um, on Generation Swine. But anyway, um... Marty Fredrickson, um, this is probably a big deal, a big break for him getting to write with Vince Neil. Um, and uh, even though it's not successful, you know, that's a, he's a great contact that he's made here because he does um, feature um, future Motley Crue albums. But let's move on now, looking at uh, Discogs, let's move on now and have a look at, um, there he is, with Jeff, Jeff Barris, who of course produced um, the um, Outlaw uh, Blood album, but um, moving on to um, well, here's Aerosmith. So he's working. This was a big break for him. Oh, there's also Jason Bonham Band. So another connection there with um, Motherland. So he's uh, working with the Jason Bonham Band. Uh, but then he gets this big break working for Aerosmith because, and what supposedly happens is uh, John Kalodner comes up to him or contacts him and says. Um, well, if initially he says, I'd like you to work with Jackal, and um, he's not overly excited about that, but as he was hoping it was going to be Erasmus, but he says, hey, okay, sure. Um, and then uh, John Colonna contacts him a week or two later or something like that and says, actually, I'd like you to work with Erasmus. Um, 
so uh, he's much happy about that and uh, yeah so he ends up um, looking on the Nine Lives album here and it's probably fair to say you know Aerosmith not as successful really from Nine Lives onwards they haven't had a great run they weren't as successful um, as what they had been but um, I'm not saying Marty Frederick was saying anything to do with it but um, yeah anyway moving on to the next band I want to talk about and it's uh, Brother Kane so I'm going to uh, move on from Vince and put on next one, uh, next song I want to play. This is a song called Machete uh, by the, the band Brother Kane. And I've actually got it on vinyl. I got this. This is like a jukebox single. I like the song so much, and I noticed oh, we can get it on vinyl, so I grabbed it. So this is uh, yeah, Machete, um, and it's from the album. Uh, I've actually got the album. So I'll show you the album from the album Wish Pull. And yeah, Marty Fredrickson does uh, has a songwriting credit, uh, or has many songwriting credits, I think, on this album. But um, and he's worked, of course, on their previous albums as well. Uh, him and uh, Damon Johnson is one of the songwriters also who does vocals and guitar in the band. I guess it's alternative rock. Hard rock. Good song. So he's working, um, working with them. You notice he, he's also worked with Rick and Sam Boris, and now he's got some a bit of a Brian Derby connection happening there. Uh, working with the Scorpions. Not an album that is a fan favourite, I'd I. Uh, it connects up with Rat and their 1999 album. Uh, has a songwriting credit for three songs on that album. Uh, I'd say that's probably the John Kolodner connection again, because John Kolodner had something to do with uh, Rat reforming and putting out that album in 1999. Um, yeah, and he's got various artists here. Mick Jagger, that's a big name that he got to work with. Um, but the one I want to talk about here is The Cult and Beyond Good and Evil, which is a bit of a comeback album for them. Um, and uh, I'm gonna play, there's only one song on that album that he has a songwriting credit for, and it's called Three. I'll play that one now. Not a super heavy song, but um, I quite like it. It's not definitely not one of my uh, favorite songs off the album, but I think it's a really good album, this one. Really good. Uh, Turn for the cult who pretty much I thought had put it quits. But, um, they make a comeback in 2001 with Beyond Good and Evil, and it's a really strong album, I think. It wasn't super successful, but I think it's a good, good album. The song's also written by Mick Jones, so obviously you've got the guys from the cult um, but, uh, and Marty Fredrickson, but also Mick Jones from, from Brona uh, has a songwriting credit on this song. And interestingly too, Marty Fredrickson and Mick Jones uh, team up uh, to write songs for Foreigner's album. You'll see that coming up here on Discog. Now here's a huge name that he got to write with and work with, Ozzy Osbourne. Um, and I've actually got, uh, of course I've got that album. So let's, um, let's take the cult down and let's go to Ozzy Osbourne. I'm going to play a song that I never had, uh, which is from this album was a single um, and definitely X not uh, not a favorite of mine to be honest Def Leppard uh, really haven't done much for me since slang which I thought was okay I uh, wasn't a big fan of Adrenalize the story I like Romania is fantastic. Um, and yeah, as you can hear, the song's not, not heavy. Um, it's just commercial pop rock, really. You know, so Marty's coming in, just helping with the songwriting. But again, you know, all these artists that he's working with, they used to better write songs without outside songwriters and, and could do a good job. So I'm not quite sure why Def Leppard. Thought they needed to um, 
get an outside songwriter, but um, I guess I've worked with Matt Lang and a few other songwriters in the past, but anyway, this is the song now. Now, he actually works with Bon Jovi on, on the Bounce album, but it's interesting because none of his songs actually make the album. So he has the songwriting credits for some demos, and they're on the Everyday, let's see here, Everyday, the CD single. So he does have songwriting credits for the CD single, uh, the B-sides, but actually none of his songs, I think, made the album Bounce. But there we go, there's another huge name, Bon Jovi, who works with, of course, as we saw before, he worked. With, he did work with Richie Sambora. Um, oh, now just two. Um, I do have now on vinyl, but not because I've got the album, but because this is definitely good. I've got the best of um, volume two. So I do have the song on vinyl, but it's through a compilation. Um, not that interested in the album. But um, this, and again, this 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 was something I felt was worth picking up this tour. Well, some of those songs that off well, those albums, I'm maybe not that fussed about, but this is maybe one or two good songs on the album that are worth having. Um, right, so anyway, um, let's see, what are we up to? Yeah, it's Aussie again, there's definitely a bird. So we're in the early 2000s now, and um, yeah, nothing, nothing here coming up that's actually in my collection. He worked with Paul Stanley, so huge names that he's worked with. Buck Cherry, now he's, like I said before, he's just produced and written um, their latest album that just came out this year. So he's still working with them. Um, Scorpions again. Right, and then Motley Crue. So here we go. So let's play um, The Saints of Los Angeles. So this was a comeback album for them after, you know, I guess getting everyone back together again and having had uh, been quite a, quite a long period of time since their last album. And this is the title track from their comeback album, The Saints of Los Angeles. Good song. For me, the best song off the album, the rest of the album is pretty average for me. Um, you see here he's got a credit for the Animal and Me. Um, one of the greatest hits. Yeah, so the end of one more, so the one more is the Saints of Los Angeles. So, um, I don't have Saints of Los Angeles on vinyl, but I do have the greatest hits. Um, it's a really good compilation, of course. Uh, it's certainly a great song. But it's got Saints of Los Angeles on it, and it's also got the Animal and Me remix on it. I do have that song on vinyl. And like I say, I do like the song. Uh, it's a title track from the album. It's a good one. Alright, so we're in about 2009 period at the moment. Um, and you can see he's working with a wide variety of artists now. Hailstorm, Anna Montana, Weary Underwood. Uh, now, he works in 2010 with a brand new band. The band is called American Bang. And... Um, they're really just Amer America's sort of hard rock band, um, and I do actually have that album on vinyl, so I'll show this one and um, play a song. Well, there's only one song actually um, on this album that he has a songwriting credit for, and it's called "Wouldn't Want to Be You." Um, yeah, that's the third track on side two. It's not my favourite song off the album. But there are some good songs on here. Whiskey Walk, Wild and Young. Um, these guys, I think, well, some of the guys have. It's a one and done album, but they've gone on and formed another band since, uh, since this band. So I'm not really familiar with that band. This is pretty good. Um, not a common sort of sound that was coming out in 2010 on a major label. Um, but yeah, and Marty has just the one song writing credit. And it's the song here, Wouldn't Want to Be You. But yeah, pretty good album if you haven't heard that one, check it out. And like I say, they've got some of the guys in that band are, have, uh, are still performing, but uh, with a, in a different band. Right, so uh, moving on now. Oh yeah, now he hooks back up with Vince Neil in 2010. Um, so this is like 15 years after working with him on, on Vince's second album, Tattoos and Tequila, which I think is a really good song. 
but a lot of the songs on that album are cover songs. Now here's the connection with Foreigner, kind of slowed down, so when it comes to Love and Eleven More, so he, he songwrites, uh, does a lot of the songwriting uh, with I guess Mick Jones on that album, that sort of, uh, comeback album for Foreigner, with Kelly Hansen on vocals though. I've been working with modern rock bands like Saving Abel, um, Gary Underwood, um, Daltry, even Black Bell Brides is working with. A lot of guys who've been on American Idol or shows like that, like so David Cook, James Durbin, um, Three Doors Down. Okay, so now we're just going to move to the next page here. So he has a lot of songwriting credits. And we're going down through here. So he's back with Aerosmith on their Music From Another Dimension album. And we'll just sift through this because I don't actually have too much more to show from my collection that he has, or from bands that he's worked with. Yeah, here's the, the album I showed before. So it's about the best of it. So just that song on. Uh, but this is one I do have. Uh, Orianthe. Um, Sorry and Eight More. So he worked that one on so I'm going to play the song my favorite song of this of that album I think um, the slow one falling out of the dark but I think it's really good and this is the album here Orient the Orient the sure if I'm saying it right there this album really surprised me I did not think I would be buying it but um, I really like it and yeah he Marty Fredrickson does a lot of the songwriting on it came out on Frontiers and uh, 2020. I can imagine this could have had, definitely had hit potential. I'm not sure if it was released as a single or not, but um, it's a good song. And yeah, as I said, he's just continued to work as a producer and a singer and a, uh, as, sorry, as a songwriter. Um, some big names, uh, but um, here we go. I'm gonna stop it there. Um, I just wanted to highlight the albums or artists that I have in my collection uh, that you know Marty Friedman has a songwriting credit for, um, and just you know give some general information about those albums and artists as, as we go through it. All right, well that's it for now. Um, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, leave a comment. Uh, what do you think about Marty Fredrickson and some of the albums that he's worked on? Maybe uh, you weren't even familiar with him and the work that he does, but um, he definitely, uh, uh, just like a lot of the, um, you know, the songwriters out there, you know, he obviously brings a lot to the table. Otherwise, people wouldn't wouldn't hire him, wouldn't use him. Um, and uh, yeah, I think. Um, there's no guarantee that if his name's in the credits, it's going to be a great song, but it can be a great song. He's done some great songs and helps helped artists out, uh, create some great music. So, um, yeah, and over a long period of time, so we've been talking almost, well, over 30 years since, um, you know, our little blood came out. So, um, yeah, it's been in the music industry for quite some time. Anyway, um, I'll leave it at that, and um, I'll be back sometime very soon with a new episode. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you later. See ya.